I'm Atubo George, and I'm so blessed to be sharing this broadcast with you today. Now, before we go further, can we call and demand our daily bread? Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Why are we making this demand? Because Jesus said we should ask. And he says, give us this day. Now, when you hear a prayer like that, or when you hear an instruction like that, it was an instruction Jesus was giving. He said, after this man, I pray. That's an instruction. It's not an advice. He said, pray like this. So if you're smart, you pray exactly the way Jesus said you should pray. Praise God. Now, I'm not just saying that would only be your prayer. But if you're smart, I mean, Jesus clearly said, there's an instruction. Now, I've done, done a teaching on, on, on what we call the Lord's Prayer. It wasn't Jesus that called it the Lord's Prayer. Now, we called it the Lord's Prayer because for, for reference purpose, you understand? So it doesn't mean if, if you don't tag it, that it will not be effective. No, sir. <laughs> Praise God. We are the ones that call it the Lord's Prayer. And we call it the Lord's Prayer for reference purpose. So if I say the Lord's Prayer, yeah, you know where to open to in, in, in the scriptures. Praise God. Now, but Jesus was, was just teaching his disciples, and that's in ex, with extension referring to us also, because we are his disciples. So he was just teaching his disciples the things he does. He, he was teaching them how he relates with God. So he said to them, after this manner, pray. So he says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, I love that part because, you see, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, and one of the things, and the mo one of the most important things he does in your life is to bring the truth because Jesus said he will guide you into all truth not some truth all truth so i'll never forget the day you know i was just meditating on that it says give us this day our daily bread right oh now our daily bread our daily bread meaning jesus was actually saying we've got daily bread to receive from the Father. Now, if it's called daily bread, it means we receive it every day. Wow. I, I was meditating on this years ago. I was meditating on this. And then the word of the Lord came to me. You see that now? Now, isn't that amazing? You're reading the Bible and then you're meditating on what you just read in the Bible. And then you are now saying the word of the Lord came to you. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's the life of, of, of a child of God. So the word of the Lord came to me and he said, Jesus was not the first person that made reference to daily bread. I'm like, okay, all right. So, and then the Lord spoke to me and says, David knew about it. <laughs> yes, because David said, he daily loads us with benefits. Now, when, when someone says, he daily loads us with benefit, and then another person now comes here and says, hey, guys, ask your father who daily loads you with benefits. Ask him for your daily bread. Now he gets in the picture. I said, you mean David, no wonder he, needed, he, he led a successful life. He did, because of the understanding of the things he had. So Jesus wasn't coming to tell us anything new. Praise God. He came to establish that which has been from the beginning. So he, he was bringing to light what David said. He daily loads us with benefits. Wow. And you know, David said, bless the Lord of my soul and do not forget all his benefits. Praise God. Now, those are scriptures that I just love. And so I saw that, I was like, oh, then, then, then no, no child of God should be broke. No child of God should be broke. 
No child of God should have a need that they don't know what to do about. No. It doesn't matter what you have to do. Hey, now, the size of bread a child consumes is not the same size of bread an adult will consume. Now, I have children between two years and eight years. So now, they all don't eat the same portion of food. Talk less of eating the same portion of food with us, their parents. See? So I'm not going to take the measure of my two-year-old and make it my measure. I wouldn't do that. I'll be starving myself. Praise God. So, but then as, as, as that child is growing up, his portions will increase. Are you getting the idea now? So there, is, there are different measures. There is the little measure. According to your level at that time you receive. But you see, as you grow, what happens to you? You increase the measure that you consume. So the same thing with, with your heavenly father. So what is it? When he says, give us this day our daily bread. The measure of your daily bread last year just will not be the same measure of your daily bread today. Now, when he's talking about daily bread, he's not talking about physical loaf of bread. I hope you understand what I'm saying. He's talking about daily provisions. So you see, what your needs were last year is certainly not the same as this year. Well, blessed God, Paul declared, he says, my God shall supply all your needs, not according to your economic system, not according to to, to what you feel. No, he says, but according to his riches in glory. Praise God. Now, what does that tell me? God is not looking at our economy and saying, man, things are getting bad, though. Um, you guys, you have to brace up because um, it might just happen that we'll reduce your portion. No, praise God. God will never talk like that. He, he can't even talk like that. Praise God. He can't even. How? <laughs> How? In Mongo Vosia. His measure is great. Praise God. There is nothing you are going to need in your life that he doesn't have the capacity to contain. He doesn't have the capacity to supply. So if your measure was this great, don't start looking at when your needs are increasing and you start telling yourself, ah, you know, you know, I was talking to someone um, a few days ago who we were just analyzing. You know, that, that's what we do. Most of my friends, that's what we do when we meet. We talk about the goodness of God. We, we, we specifically talk about the grace of God as walking in our lives. You know, so I'll just share it with, with this person and say, look, the same faith I demonstrated when we were just, you know, three of us, when we had our first child, is the same faith we're demonstrating today that we have four children now you know what it is one child and four children they are all going to school they are all needing every you understand what i'm talking about i said it it, it's the same principle of faith and you don't never say look i've mastered this thing so and there's no need to think about it i i learned this that you know what you've got to visit every conviction that you carry in your heart you've got to visit it from time to time and, and remind yourself of these convictions. Re always remind yourself and tell yourself, this is why this thing is working for me. Now, everything you do, see, the word of the Lord, you must wait for the word of the Lord to come to you consigning that thing. And when the word of the Lord come to you consigning it, grab it. You know, for example, I, I just sh was sharing with you how the Lord instructed us about making the demand for our daily bread. Now I see, now that's the word of the Lord that came to me. Now, when you begin to do it, soon you realize that things are becoming easy for you when meeting your need is concerned. You realize maybe you've been doing this consistently with understanding for like two months, three months. You suddenly realize that 
hey, when was the last time I didn't really have food to eat? Now, before now, this was a regular occurrence. You know, almost every week, there's going to be that time where you're like, God, who am I, who am I going to beg for money? Or, or You understand what I'm saying? But then you, you keep doing this thing and doing this thing. And after like three months, you just realize that, come, I've never been in that position where I have to beg for bread. Whoa. Yeah, that's true. Hey, God has blessed me. Now, if you are wise and you're that kind of person that, that, that takes things seriously, you'll be able to trace it to when the word of the Lord came to you. You see that now? And then you pinpoint it. Oh, I see. Because the Holy Spirit will help you do that. I see this is the instruction that is causing these things to happen. Now, when you know that, it is so easy, number one, to keep yourself from error. Number two, to you see, how do you know? The moment you begin to enter into error. Now, when I mean error, I'm talking about the wrong living, wrong teaching, wrong understanding. The moment you begin to enter into that realm of error, this is what's going to happen to you. Those instructions you used to keep before, you begin to pull out from them. And the moment you begin to pull out from them, it's going to start affecting that because... Anything that is not of God, anything that is in error, will not produce a blessing in your life. So what's going to happen to you? You're going to start going back to those days that you left before. Now, the moment you see that happen in your life, don't take time to go and start thinking, oh, what is happening? Go back to the instructions that you have received from the Lord before. Then ask yourself, at what point did I stop declaring this? For example, the Lord can tell you, pray like this every day. Oh, he can tell you. He can tell you that. Oh, he does tell us things like that. Now, there are several instructions the Lord have given to me and it's a daily thing. And I see to it, I do it every day. Praise God. I may not feel like it. But you know what Samuel said to Saul? To obey is better than sacrifice. Now, this is beyond your feeling. Obedience is beyond your feeling. You don't obey because you feel like, oh, I feel good to this, I'm going to obey. Nah, 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 I don't feel too good. See, that thing, eh? Must, must, I, must I obey? Come on now. <laughs> you don't want trouble in your life. So, when, when, you, when you go back to those, those things that the Lord has commanded you that you're obeying, and soon, you will begin to trace where the error is coming from. Now, that, that's how you can live your life free of error. That's how you can live your life free of wrong relationship because most times, that's what breeds error, wrong relationship. You are doing fine and suddenly you come in contact with this person. Now, it might be physical contact with the person or it might be um, maybe even on TV or on, on, on you just start fellowshipping with someone else. And soon, they begin to deviate your mind from the truth. I'm talking about wrong relationship now. They begin to deviate your mind from the truth. And the more you follow, the more your mind is diverted. And as your mind is being diverted, you will suddenly begin to stop doing the instructions the Lord had commanded you to be doing before. So now when you realize that things are getting bad, and then you now want to go back to those things the Lord commanded you to do. Now, this is how you detect error and where it's coming from. As you go back to those things, you will now realize that it is now affecting your flow with this person or with this thing that you were doing before. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, now that's how you live sin free. I'm telling you the truth. And that's how you know the sin that is easily, like the Bible said, drop that sin that is easily besetting you. That's how you know. It will, it will stop you. It will pull you away from keeping God's instructions. Now, when you now go back, because you know keeping God's instruction is right. When you go back, now you understand what David said when it meant when he says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Now, that's what he was talking about. 
So the, the instruction, you remember, look, this God told me to be doing this and I have not been doing it. So things are getting bad. I'm going back to those things. Now, as you go back to those things, soon enough, you will find out, aha, this is what stopped me from doing this thing. Aha, this is the teaching that I heard that made me to start taking these things lightly. Oh, now it's so easy for you to say, ah, I know that's what thing to cut off. It's now your responsibility to cut off that thing so that you will do the word. Praise God. You will do the instruction that the Lord has given to you. Praise God. Now, our, our, our time is up. I know these words are a great blessing to you. So I pray for you right now. I pray the Holy Spirit will open your hearts and your mind and bring to your remembrance the personal instructions the Lord have given to you. And I pray that as you hear, the courage will be found in you to go back to them and begin to obey the command of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray by God's mercy, things have been restored in your life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.